In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Coming together as God's family, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Be near, O Lord, to those who plead before you, and look kindly on those who place their hope in your mercy, that cleansed from the stain of their sins, they may persevere in holy living, be made full heirs of your promise, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abram prostrated himself, God spoke to him. My covenant with you is this. You are to become the father of a host of nations. No longer shall you be called Abram. Your name shall be Abraham. For I am making you the father of a host of nations. I will render you exceedingly fertile. I will make nations of you. Kings shall stem from you. I will maintain my covenant with you and your descendants after you throughout the ages as an everlasting pact to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. I will give to you and to your descendants after you the land in which you are now staying, the whole land of Canaan, as a permanent possession, and I will be their God. God also said to Abraham, On your part, you and your descendants after you must keep my covenant throughout the ages. The word of the Lord. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Recall the wondrous deeds that he has wrought his portents, and the judgments he has uttered. The Lord remembers his covenant for him. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jews, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. So the Jews said to him, Now we are sure that you are possessed. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, Whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died, or the prophets, who died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is worth nothing. But is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say, He is our God. You do not know him, but I know him. And if I should say that I do not know him, I would be like you, a liar. 
but I do know him, and I keep his word. Abraham, your father, rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid and went out of the temple area. The Gospel of the Lord. When we enter into a loving relationship with God, we are transformed. We become a new creation. And certainly as we hear in today's first reading about Abraham, our father in faith, and also we might remember Sarah, his wife, we might remember that we ourselves could maybe think of that story as our own story, as part of how we ourselves have come into relationship with the Lord, how we have been transformed. Certainly, uh, living in a community where we have many wisdom leaders, one of the things that is very clear, that no one has ever experienced anything like we are experiencing now. It's something that probably most living people could easily say. They have never seen anything like the situation we experience in our country and in our world today. But it's simply for us a reminder of how close our Lord is to us. Because we could look at the life of Abraham and maybe say what he experienced no other human being had ever experienced before. His deep devotion to the Lord, his covenant with the Lord. No one had known the Lord in this way in history. He is our father in faith. And his wife Sarah's life was also transformed by her loving relationship with the Lord. If we allow ourselves in this time to enter deeply into what we are experiencing, how our Lord is speaking to us, we ourselves have the opportunity to be transformed. Our prayer lives should be different than they've ever been before. It's difficult for us to even form words to wrap our heads around what we are experiencing. We can only come honestly to the silence of being with our Lord. In today's gospel, Jesus speaks to the Jews, those who are clearly meant to be the faithful, that they do not understand who he is. They do not understand the gifts that he is bringing into this world. By the life of Christ, we ourselves, each one of us, have been transformed and enter into the loving relationship that Abraham himself experienced. And in fact, it's amazing in today's gospel to see how Jesus and Abraham are so close, how they understand one another, how they build upon each other. Jesus came into this world to save us from our sins, to renew the world, to have us experience eternal life, to have us experience a hope which is beyond any other hope in history. We are living in a time that is new for many of us, maybe experiences that we've never had before, maybe experiences no one we know has ever had before. But our Lord is with us. He is loving us. He is transforming us at this very moment. Let us take this opportunity to open up our hearts and our lives and our minds to the gift that he is giving us and has given us each and every day of our life. 
Let us experience deeply his transforming love. You know, one of the things that many of us are seriously missing is the opportunity to receive the body of Christ, the opportunity to participate in the Mass. It's truly, as we know, a tremendous gift that leaves us longing to receive once again the body of Christ. Our Lord wanted us to experience truly his love. And he continues to give himself to us. Let us open our minds. Let us open our hearts to the love that we are experiencing today. A love which maybe we ourselves do not even know or see or understand at this time. Let us bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father. Let us pray, first of all, for Francis, our Pope, for bishops, deacons, and religious. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for those who are least in our world, for those who possibly have lost hope, that they may experience the love of Christ in their lives today. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for those who are sick, for those who are suffering in any way, especially those who are touched by the coronavirus that maybe have lost loved ones or are sick themselves, that they may experience the healing presence of Christ active in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Let us remember our benefactors, supporters of the Society of Little Flower, for all those who support the Carmelites in their ministries and in their life. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear Let's remember first responders, medical staff, and all, for all those who are serving us in our greatest, greatest need, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear Let us remember our troops serving throughout the world, that they may return safely to their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear Let us remember our beloved dead, those who have gone before us, that they may be one with Christ, we pray to the Lord. And let us now bring our own intentions, our own longings, our own desires before our Father in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Father, we bring all our prayers before you. We ask you to hear them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these sacrificial offerings, that they may profit our conversion 
and the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed in the authority of Christ crucified. And so with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exultation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, Richard, our Apostolic Administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. By Christ, keep me safe for everlasting life. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow down. Be gracious to your people, Lord, we pray that as from day to day they reject what does not please you, they may be filled instead with delight at your commands. Through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us offer a prayer to Mary, our Mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Our Lady Mount Carmel, go in the peace of Christ, the Mass is ended. Have a blessed day.